All right, welcome back. Part two of the precision of language lesson. The document camera is working, so we resume. Part of being precise is getting these really weak, meaningless, valley girl words out of your speech and your writing. We're going to start with your writing first, and throughout you maturing, throughout the rest of the year, you will stop saying these words too. You don't want to say things like absolutely, all, big, little, completely, definitely, good, bad, great, fine, nice, okay, wonderful, almost, quite and really, kind of, sort of, just, so, very, and would. So they are out of context. Words like so, like so hungry, you could say famished. All right, and starving only if it really applies to that truly starving situation. Mm -hmm. Very tired, exhausted, totally tired, exhausted. What is on there and any other helping verbs that stand by themselves? Helping verbs are supposed to help, not be by themselves. So like had, that's had what, All right? So we'll come back to that. This is a really bad paragraph with those bad words. Read along with me and listen for these words. Every night at camp, when we were totally tired out from playing the game, we would all sort of fall down. Can you sort of fall down, right? You're either down or you're not. In a big pile on the floor of our cabin. We would just laugh and laugh. It really was so much fun. Then, after we would calm down a little bit, we would suddenly be very, very hungry. I think there's a word for that. Our counselor would be quite mad, there's a word for that, that our cabin was always awake after lights out. But hopefully we could get her to just chill out and let us eat chips and stuff we really weren't supposed to have at camp. All right, so think about what words are bad. We have totally tired, sort of fall, laugh and laugh, really, so much fun. I think there's a word for that. A little bit. I think there's a word for coming down a little bit. There's a word for very hungry, quite mad, chill out is slang, stuff, tells us nothing, get rid of it. So here's the improved version. At night, after we were exhausted from playing the game, we collapsed in a heap on the floor of the cabin. We lay there in a tangle of arms and legs and shook with giggles. When the laughter died out, hunger took over. We were starving. Mm, I don't think that's precise, but it's better. We drove our counselor crazy that summer because when the other cabins were quiet and dark, ours was alive with the sounds of eight girls shrieking, roughhousing, and rattling bags of forbidden junk food. So there was the original, and this is the much improved one. Instead of totally tired, we have exhausted. We have collapsed in a heap, better than sort of fall, and big pile. A tangle of arms and legs. I know that creates a very vivid picture in my mind, almost like a spider. And I can really picture the girls heaving with those giggles that just make your face turn red and you can't breathe. I like this dichotomy, this opposites. When the laughter died out, hunger took over. I would probably replace this word crazy. Uh, that's not precise at all. Plus, it's overused. Maybe say, we annoyed, um, we were her peeves, quiet and dark, alive, that's also a nice contrast, and personification, and shrieking, roughhousing, and rattling, excellent vivid verbs. So as part of making these revisions, I want you to use a thesaurus. Now, if we had books in front of us, this is the, long, this is the longer drawn out process. Let's say you have a sentence like, I had the snake in my hands. Had is a helping verb. It's weak. It creates no picture in my mind. So had, it's not there. It's have is its original form. So read what's there. Include, accommodate, team with, possess, occupy, 
own as in hold. So then you would go to H-O-L-D, see what hold has. All these different versions of the word. So hold as in control, possess, retention, um, reading them over, and you're like, no, it's not really the word I'm going for, no. And you're reading them all. You're reading them all again. And first of all, these are all holds as a noun. Like he had him in a hold as in a thing. So you want to skip down here. It's a common mistake. Go to the verb kind of hold and read them over. Now you're in the right spot. Possess, occupy, retain, hold back. It doesn't really pertain to the snake. Grasp. Now we're on to something. Seize, grip, clutch. So maybe I'll use clutch. But read the rest just to make sure it's not still there. And then replace it. I clutch the snake. And even instead of hands, tiny fists. Much better. You're probably going to just use thesaurus.com and you won't go through this process as so much, but I think you still will. Make sure you're on the right part of speech. Read all your choices. You're just not saying, okay, that will do. Does it fit the context of your sentence? Please check for that. Now I'm going to show you the radar revision document. It's the multicolored doc sitting in your attachments today. Radar stands for, let it load. I'm going to make this second A little, lowercase I should say, for being precise. That's a 